31st of May 2010. From the very start of this crisis, I've lamented the fact that there was never any real debate about the nature of the crisis. Was it a crisis of liquidity or solvency? Should the banks be bailed out, or should they be forced to pay off their bad debts and go bankrupt if necessary? Should we incur vast public debt on their behalf or not? These were fundamental questions that were never properly debated. I understand the crisis was fast moving, but not so fast and not all the time. There were long periods when a proper political and public debate could have taken place. What happened instead was that we were subjected to a chorus of hectoring voices from the financial class, backed up by their slavering politicians and lapdog journalists. They all shared, it seemed to me, one central purpose, to prevent any real debate about what needed to be done. At one of the most critical periods in recent history, our democracy seriously failed us. We are living with the consequences of that failure. One compelling piece of evidence demonstrating how that debate was stifled came yesterday in transcripts just released by the Fed meeting held on 16th of March 2004. At that meeting they were discussing fears of a possible housing bubble developing. The president of the Atlanta Federal Reserve, Jack Gunn, explained that a number of folks are expressing growing concern about potential overbuilding and worrisome speculation in the real estate market, especially in Florida, with buyers freely admitting that they have no intention of occupying the units or building on the land, but rather are counting on flipping the properties, selling them quickly at higher prices. That's what he said. A suggestion was made to lay out the facts of the developing housing bubble in a public document to stimulate discussion and debate. The Fed chairman at the time, no other than Alan Greenspan, made it crystal clear what he thought, and I quote, we run, the we run the risk, he said, by laying out the pros and cons of a particular argument of inducing people to join in on the debate, and in this regard it is possible to lose control of a process that only we fully understand. Could there be a clearer statement of the utter contempt for you and me as thinking adults? No clearer admission that control was the main priority. Informed debate was strangled, and in its place came assurances that what had to be done was being done by those educated and expert enough to do it. And you, little people, just pipe down and remember your place. Speak when spoken to and do what you're told. That was in 2004 when the crisis was being incubated. Do you really think the attitude of those in power changed when the utter folly of their actions became apparent? There was no debate, and there still isn't, because those in power would rather your children grew up without a hope of a job, without a hope of a career, without hope of a decent education or a national health service, just as long as their financial system and wealth remain. They would rather all that than allow you any real debate or choice. It seems to me, when it comes to finance, we can choose any party, any course of action we like, so long as it falls within a narrow range of acceptable choices and never threatens the control of those who claim to know what's best. This makes me wonder whether we still live in a real democracy, or are we actually living in a pretend one, in which we get to dress up in its clothes, but where it is stripped of its real, meaningful and radical content. 